the word called as sampling so when we are looking with this word called as the, the, the sampling the first and foremost way was we need to get a word called as population so from population we will get some entities so those entities we are going to consider i get entity 1 entity 2 so these are what we are going to call it as population and this is we will call or we are assuming it as a complete set we will assume it as a complete set from this complete set we will draw a subset we will draw a subset so drawing of a subset we are going to call here as sampling drawing of a subset we are going to call here as sampling so we will pick up a sample and we will apply the data mining techniques we will apply the data mining techniques like uh, clustering classification association etc then this it is going to affect to the whole population so we are going to make a test on population and then we will come to a conclusion the pulse of the population was like that then we will estimate the effect or estimate or predict the content in population so when we conduct some surveys polls etc feedbacks etc for the entire class of 60 nobody will ask they will randomly call two or three students whatever information they want to get they will get it and they feel that input is going to be the pulse of the entire class similarly when a movie was released people will ask two to three persons how is the movie what is the review etc so based on that person review then they will predict the entire movie was like this similarly while doing an election etc they will conduct surveys and they will conduct exit polls etc so they are not asking the 138 crore population who is going to win for the next election they won't do it they will do it partially to some people and after doing this to some people they will come to a conclusion that all are going to do the same all are going to follow the same so this is what we are going to call here as a sample we will take a small sample and then we are going to assume it belongs to that database why we are going to do sampling because we need to run some algorithm and that algorithm should be very very perfect it should be sublinear and basically the size of the data to which the algorithm is going to work so that it is going to make a good remarkable contribution so we are going to choose a representative subset we call here as a sample how we are going to choose the sample randomly come to a class okay you stand up and you they'll ask this is the question what is your answer so they are not intentional i will ask only this girl this question no they will come to the classroom they will ask randomly one girl will be chosen and a query is posed it is fluke there so what we call that nature was we call that nature here as random sampling 
it is not assigned to a particular person randomly one person is picked up a question is asked and it goes off so this is one of a key principle second was stratified sampling we partition the entire population into different contents after partitioning the entire partition into different contents then sampling is going to be overtaken that is what we call it as stratified so instead of applying to a bulk they will ask education people as one sector banking people as one sector government employees as one pep so in this way now they will take people from teachers they will take people from businessmen they will take people for people who are working in bank so from everyone they will take their opinion then they will come to a common conclusion then that type of sampling we are going to call here as a stratified sampling so an election is going off and people want to know who is going to win then the entire population they will discriminate on their jobs teaching is a job software is a job so in this way different jobs are pulled up and from each job they will pick up some people and they will ask the what who is going to win they will tell their opinion based upon that they believe he is the representative of that and these people mindset is like that they are thinking like that so obviously the pattern will be found and that it is going to be given to the entire population so this is what we are going to call here as a sampling content now how we are going to do this sampling how we are going to do this sampling means uh, there are different types of sampling mechanisms one we are going to call it as a simple random sampling so when we do a simple random pop uh, sampling we will have a equal probability for selecting in particular it so i just mentioned in this example i have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 so there are 11 samples here so every sample has an equal chance to get for a randomness then that sampling we are going to call here as a simple sampling second thing now there are 11 instances there are 11 samples here then again this is for first iteration then when i want to go for the second iteration then i want to go to the second iteration i will use two techniques one i am going to call it as with replacement and two we are going to call it as without replacement one we are going to call it as with replacement another we are going to call it as without replacement when we are going to say it is without without replacement mute your, mute your audio so we have this uh, second iteration in this second iteration what we are going to do is there are total 11 samples are there with replacement is that already one sample is estimated in the first iteration now we will consider only 10 samples we will consider only 10 samples if we are going to call this one for without replacement then what we will check was we will consider level samples then we will consider level samples so this is the three techniques what we are going to talk one we will draw a sample randomly we will call it as simple sampling two we are going to call it as without replacement 
so we will put the sample into the same population again we will draw random then maybe the previous sample what we put may come again so that is all luck we say it is without replacement the third thing what we are going to call it as with replacement as we have taken that sample so we will put that sample again we will check the population size we will randomly pick one more content then we are going to call that technique as a sampling with the replacement then the other technique what we are going to call here as a stratified sampling so if this is a stratified sampling technique assume we are going to have 100 samples in the population then what we will do is we are going to draw it into bins we are going to draw it into bins so bin 1 bin 2 and bin t so in every bin we will put some 10 samples every bin we are going to draw it into 10 samples after taking this into 10 samples we will select any one sample randomly then such type of sampling technique we are going to call it as a stratified sampling so the entire population in the data set will be partitioned into some equal bins assume the bin size is 10 100 samples are there then we will get 10 samples now from this 10 samples we will draw one sample then such type of emergence we are going to call it as a stratified samples when we are going to call it as stratified samples you can see here the population we are going to assume this population as raw data so you can see here stratified sampling with replacement and without replacement you can see the word here it is with and this is the word it is showing without so we have the entire population here and these entire population we are going to uh, take one sample so you can see this sample it is out here as we are going to say it is without we will choose an another sample so that is what we are going to put the two words one we call it as with samples another we are going to call it as without replacement now final outcome was when we are going to do with a stratified sampling when we are going to do with stratified sampling the raw data is there then we form these into groups we form them into partitions we form them into groups nor we are going to form them into partitions so what you can see here was we are going to have um, a green 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 elements here then we do have eight elements here we do have nine elements here from the nine elements we pick five samples then from the eight we put four samples and from the nine we are taking five samples so you can assume this is uh, with the replacement stratified sampling with the replacement so this is how we put the things apply the things on the sample if it is correct on the sample then we are going to assume that it will be applied to the rest of the things next comes the word called as data cube aggregation when we are going to call this one as a data cube aggregation
data cube aggregation properties will hold for summation operations like drill up drill down so for these operations we will look for drill up drill up we will look for data queue operations then we are going to consider the item for a data queue then we are going to consider the item for a data queue we will look for three dimensions the y axis look for the item with x axis and look for the item for z axis three dimensional approach is going to be formulated now we will have a parts of it we will have a parts of it and these parts we are going to draw at this point now we will call these elements as slices we will call these elements as a slice so when we are going to do some summation operation with mean or standard deviation or any other operation we go with slicing we go with dicing operations when we consider some partial cube item then we are going to call the word as dicing we are going to call the word as dicing so when coming to the data cube operation we put the things in form of a cuboid and thereby we are going to estimate the cubes into multiple levels of aggregation so this is one of a approximation use of what we are going to use for the data cube the third technique of data reduction was of data compression so we will compress the data we will reduce the data the string data or image data or character data etc we call that technique as a compression while doing a technique as compression it will go with lossy or it will go for lossless one it goes with lossy compression te techniques two it will does with the lossless compression techniques so assume that there is a pic in your mobile phone pic in your mobile phone it will occupy 1 to 4 mb space now you send via your whatsapp now you send the same pic send the send the pic via whatsapp now the size will be 4 kb now the size is equals to 4 kb now you have tremendous difference you will observe a tremendous difference which it is going to occur so how did it happen it has happened with a technique called as data reduction it has happened with a technique by using data compression algorithms like lossy compression or lossless compression techniques so as we have used lossy compressions as we have used lossless compressions we were able to suppress the content which is of megabytes to kilobytes so you can even test right now in your whatsapp also you take an image your latest photograph in your phone 
then send it to your friend via whatsapp check the sizes it will be in megabytes the original photograph when you send it to the whatsapp to the other end it will go only 4 mb or like that the reason was that entire space is not going to be given by the service provider he is going to apply the techniques called as loss lossy but still the data will be safe and secure second thing when we are talking about the uh, data compression we will have a software called as winzip or we are using a word called as winrar files so you do your entire project and then if you want to send it to a drive it is not going to be feasible so what you will do is all the files you will put it into folder right click and then you say winzip then what exactly winzip is doing it is going to compress the things that means the normal attachment it is not giving you right to uh, due to over size of your files so your file size has to be reduced therefore that it is going to uh, reduce the content so where we are going to call that word here as a winzip content so winzip content is one of a technique which it is practiced on a general data but compression can happen on audio data compression can happen on video data etc so when we talk about this uh, data compression we have this original data as i was mentioning your uh, pick in mobile phone so your photograph in your mobile phone so it is of 1 mb then assume that you will put it to some whatsapp so obviously it will be compressed to some 4 kb etc so similarly you have a file in the hard disk and that one you can use it in winzip or winrar then these options they are going to perform compression so those compression will illustrate a lossy or will illustrate a lossless some set of data we are going to loss we say it is lossy if you still able to recaptivate it then we call that element as lossless the next comes the other topic from this chapter data preprocessing we are going to call it as data transformation and we call it as data discretization so as far as transformation is going to be concerned the most important primitive was one set of organization need to be migrated to the systems in an another set of organization you have a habit to wake up at 10 o'clock or 9 o'clock in your home but when you reside in the campus and assume that your first hour starts at 8 am now your sleeping habit has to be changed to 8 o'clock as per the college time that means your daily habit of waking up at 9 am or 10 am in the morning you need to transform to the system where you are adopted to 8 am so this is one of an example call here as a data transformation we get data from multiple sources and we are going to integrate it but when we are going to integrate it we have a problem of transformation that is transformation was that there won't be any scope to converge between first value and 
second value and that values all has to be mapped to a single unified way at that time we have to go with some replacement values so this is where we are going to call it as a data transformation so assume that i am going to measure the height if i belongs to western countries like usa and europe etc then i will measure the height in lbs if i am going to be an indian now the same height i am going to measure in kgs now lbs is talking about height correct meters are also talking about height correct but the problem is lbs has to be converted to meters or meters has to be converted to lbs so this is the difference you need to mingle up in the database i am talking about the same item but i am doing my scale as lbs you are also talking the same thing but your scale is in meters so we need to come to a common understanding to transform the data to transform the given data how we are going to do it to do it we will go with smoothing technique we will go with uh, attribute and feature content nor we are going to do with some aggregation values etc now we will use some of the techniques which we are going to call here as a normalization in normalization we will look up with min max normalization zero scale normalization decimal scale normalization or we will work with a technique called as discretization with concept hierarchies now let let us look with one of a function called as a normalization so the first technique of normalization was min max normalization the very first technique was min max normalization assume that there is a feed called as an income so roll number 501 to roll number 560 and we are putting their incomes after 2 years so it is some dollars from 12000 dollars to some dollars 98 98000 dollars per month and then they are going to put to a value between 0.1 to 1 to 0 we need to put the values between 0.1 to 1.0 so we are going to have lot of samples at this point of time then a new sample is going to occur this is new sample and this new sample has to be transformed and the new sample has to be transformed so how we are going to transform it base we will compute v complement is equals to v minus minimum of that set income divided by the maximum minus minimum into new sample minus new sample minimum minus new sample maximum plus new sample minimum so we are using this formula so we use the minimum max normalization between new minimum to new maximum so what will be the values for a new sample we need to compute so the new sample value was 973600 uh, the entire range minimum value was 
12,000. The entire range minimum value was 12,000. Then we are going to compute the entire range maximum value that is 98,000. So we put this as 98,000. So obviously we get the scale differences between new min minus new min plus new min. So minimum value was always 0. Point. Maximum value was between this is 0. 0.0. So minimum range and we are going to have the maximum range as 0. 1.0. So we get the value of 0. 0.716. So this is how we are going to get the minimum max normalization. So why we are going to do? We are going to do it for transformation of a content. We take a new value and we want to estimate where the new value is going to fit. It is having a lower boundary of 0, 0.0. It is going to have an upper boundary of 0, 0.0. Lower boundary and upper boundary we know then we sorted out the entire field called as income between 12,000 to 98,000. Then we need to check where this new sample 73,000 is going to fit. For that, we have used an algorithm called as min-max normalization. We divide it from both min and max minus min with that sample. And finally, we get a value of 0 0.71. The second type of normalization technique, what we can apply for the sample was, the sample, it is 73,000. We are going to use this word called as zero scale normalization. We are going to use the word called as zero score normalization. Zero score normalization. And we know that the sample size is some 73,600. We know the new sample, it is going to be 73,600. Now what we have, we are going to have an income. The minimum value of the income was 12,000, was 12,000. The maximum, this is 12,000 is the minimum. And the maximum, it is going to be have minimum score, minimum income. This is maximum income, maximum income. And we are aware that the scale is between 0 0.0 to 1.0 for any type of normalization. Now, what we are going to do is we take this entire value find the mean, then we are going to take the entire value, then we are going to find the standard deviation. So this is income column. For this entire income column, we are going to compute minimum, maximum, mean, standard deviation. All are going to fit on a scale. So now you can see here the normalization value and this is the formula so we have the replaced content the transformed sample v we are going to call it as the original sample minus mu we are going to call it as mean divided by sigma we are going to call it as standard deviation so this is the formula what we have to apply. So the transformation was that we want to estimate what will be the value which it is going to generate between 0, 0.0 and 1.0. So we have the sample, then we take the mean of that sample, then we are going to make the standard deviation of that value and we get this 1.2. But still, it is not going to be appropriate. Now we apply with the scale 0, 0.0 to 1.0. So that is the reason why we get 1.225 divided by 10. Then 
we are estimating this with some 0.12 in this way we are going to do up the uh, zero scaling well next comes the third technique in data transformation the third technique in data transformation was we are going to call here as discretization when we are going to call this one as a discretization we do have attributes we call it as nominal attributes we call it as ordinal attributes then we call here as a numeric attributes so numeric attributes they are going to deal with numbers it can be 5 or it can be 5.5 so it can have an integer value it can have a double or float value all these they are going to fall in the numeric class all these they are going to part in the numeric class then we have the nominal value so nominal value i will ask the question called as color of hair some say it is red some say it is blue some say it is black some say it is brown some say it is red brown etc so there is no order so no order of color is mentioned then we are going to have the ordinal value when we are going to say the ordinal value obviously we will say grades then i can say 90 to 100% you put it as o grade 80 to 90 percentage she got you put it as a plus grade then from 70 to 80 then you put it a a grade now this is first second third you do have a order so we call such elements as an ordinal values we are going to have some order but when i am going to say it is color of a hair somebody will tell it is white somebody will tell it as gray somebody will tell it as black etc now there is no order here color of a hair when it is asked there is no order it is totally we say it is unordered at that time we call such attributes as a nominal attributes when we put this into some order so cgpa 90 to 100 percent o grade 80 to 90 percent a plus grade in this way we are putting some order grade 1 grade 2 grade 3 if this is a case then we call such element as discretization so that is what we talked about normalization ordinal and numeric so while doing this discretization the most important thing what we will do is we will divide this into ranges and these ranges are going to be in continuous attributes so again 90 to 100 difference or range it is 10 80 to 90 o grade a plus grade difference is 10 a grade again i can say 70 to 80 again difference is 10 now we have equal difference now we have this as a equal difference so interval labels can be replaced with an actual data now i am going to have an interval 90 is minimum interval 100% is maximum interval so this is minimum boundary and another one is a maximum boundary for this minimum boundary and maximum boundary i am going to put a label i am going to put a class name 
O class, A plus class, A class. In this way, I am going to put a class label to it. Then we are assuming this word as a discrimination path. So 80 to 90 as one set of range having equal difference with an other interval also. So we say this is one of a classic example to look forward towards the discretization. So in discretization, we can apply classification techniques. We can apply supervised learning with classification techniques, or we can apply without labels the unsupervised techniques also. All these are going to be possible with the discretization. Now, when we are talking about discretization, we were mentioning that we need to divide or we need to distribute the things into continuous attributes where we are going to split the content nor we are going to merge the content. We, we can split the content or we can merge the content. So, this is total population. Then I am going to say split less than 60 percent, greater than 60 percent. So class of 180 students, it is 160 students here, 20 students at this case. So split. Then again, I am going to use merge operation. When I am going to do it as a merge operation, again, I am going to get 180. So in the level one granularity, in the level one granularity, I am going to apply total or I am going to apply a merge option. We call it as bottom up approach. Then in the level two operation, we are going to apply the split operation where we are going to call here as a top down. So how many got less than 60 percent? It is 160 students. How many got greater than 60 percent? We say 20 students. So we made a split. We call that approach as a top down approach. We merged the split. We made a consolidated value. Then we are going to call this one as a bottom up approach. So when doing this data discretization, we will analyze the things into binning. We will analyze the things using histograms. So how we are going to discretize the things, how we are going to do it in the numeric values. So when we are doing with binning work, we will mostly use numeric data. And this numeric data, we will be doing it in a recursion model. So here are the three techniques. Here are presenting the three techniques which a binning model is going to have. So assume we have 4, 8, 9, 15, 21, 21, 24, 25, 26, 28, 29, and 34. So total we are going to have 12 samples. And let's say bin size, or let us say the vector size is equals to four elements. So obviously you say 12 by four, you will get three bins. So in one, bin two and bin three. So now what we have done was, we have posted first four elements, next four elements, and next four elements into three equal bins. We made this into three equal bins, we made that partitions. We are going to call that technique as equidep. Then second thing was, we are going to call it as bin means. So I get four, eight, nine, and 12. So four plus eight plus nine plus 12 divided by four equals to nine. So now you are going to say 9 is going to be the mean 
so this mean you are going to replace to each value similarly i have these values 26 28 29 and 34 so you say 26 plus 28 plus 29 plus 34 divided by 4 you will be getting 29 this value is called as a mean and this mean you are going to write at this case we say that technique as bin means why did you write four times because we assume bin size is going to be four so this is the technique what we are going to call one as equator two we call it as bin mean and three let us talk about the bin boundaries so you have four 8 9 and 15 so 4 is going to be the minimum boundary 15 is going to be the maximum bound now what we are going to do is we will post the things 4 8 4 4 415 so you can assume this is minimum boundary this is maximum bound now there is a choice why did you write 4 4 4 15 why didn't you write 15 here the choice is that the average value is towards the lower end so that is the reason why we are going to put the 4 at that content the average value what we have chosen is nearer to the lower end approximation that is the reason why we have put the bin boundaries to the lower end so what we have done for today let us have a quick recap of what we have done for today so today we started off with a technique called as sampling which is going to be part of the third item now sampling we take a population of 100 assume it is 11 samples are there from that 11 samples we are going to take one item we call that as sample we work on this sample we apply all our techniques etc on this we feel that it is appropriately suiting then we believe this can be applied to the entire set of population that is we call that technique as a simple random sampling the second one was we are going to call it as sampling with replacement without replacement and with replacement when we do the word called as with replacement in the earlier example i have 11 options now if i technique you use with replacement i have to do possible sampling for 10 items if i am going to do it without replacement whatever sample i have taken i will throw it into the same box again i will randomly pick one that sample also will have a equal chance of population to pick up so that is what we call it as without replacement so when we say with replacement the chances for it the probability of getting again from that box or a basket will be zero but if i am putting the same sample back in the same basket and if i am pulling it again it Does has a equal weightage along with the others, so that is what we call with sampling and without sampling. The other type of category towards sampling was stratified sampling. In stratified sampling, what we are going to do is we have hundred samples. We will partition this into equal bins, equal vectors. From each vector, we will grab some samples and do the analysis. We say it is stratified sampling. the next part what we talked about is data cube analysis in the data cube analysis we will have a cubical model which we put the data into different levels of hierarchies we have a data cube in this data cube we does the total value composition that is summation values for that we will be getting drill up and drill down and we select a most more than one piece of a cube we call it as dicing 
exclusively we will take up only one piece then we call that element as a slice which it is a three dimensional next comes the word called as a data compression so in this data compression mostly it works on audio data video data or it works on string data etc so at this case what is going to happen at the data compression has you have your original data in your mobile phone you have your photo you can check the size of the photo it is 1.4 mb then you send the same photo to your friend in whatsapp tell her to see the size it will be of 4 mb then where is this megabyte where is this kilobyte how much data variation is going to come how did it happen means it has happened with data compression techniques what are the data compression techniques means if some data loss is going to be acceptable we call it as lossy technique i very strong that i don't want to compromise i want the entire compression uh, should be there then you say it is lossless how can i implement this lossless means i can use zipping that is winzip or winrar softwares so when it is extracted back then the original size is going to be retained so this is what we call the word called as reduction then we taken the new topic called as transformation in transformation we were telling that in western countries like usa and europe the height is measured in lvs but in indian country we measure the height in meters and centimeters either the western country people or we are talking on the same attribute called as height but the only difference is the measurements what we are going to talk so either lvs has to be converted to meters either meters has to be converted to lvs so then this type of example we are going to call here as a data transformation so how can i do this transformation over the data means you can do the transformation over the data using min max normalization zero score normalization etc so the very first technique we take up will be a normalization with min max where the values are going to be between 0.0 to 1.0 and we have the minimum value as 12000 and the maximum value as 98000 and let us see a new sample is going to come then it is put in a formula by the sample minus minimum sample minus maximum minus minimum in that uh, column then we are going to get that value as 0.7 the second way of calculating the normalization formula was we are going to use this uh, zero score so when we say it is going to be a zero score we take the entire income then we have uh, 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 the the standard deviation the mean value the actual value again we compute the same divided by 10 we get the normalized value these are the techniques then if we are talking about data discretization if we say color of a hair it can be white gray blue black etc whatever it is then the words what we are going to tell it is totally unordered but when we are going to talk about an ordered value it is going to be 90 to 100% o grade 80 to 90% is a grade you can check at every point of time the interval what we are going to talk is same between 90 to 10 difference is 10 and between 70 to 80 the difference is 10 so the label names o a a plus are given to that specific difference we say it is an equity difference that is we are dividing the entire population with some ranges and thereby we calculate the range and we give the names so that is what we call it as discretization so in the discretization it can do up in two operations split and match assume the total population is 180 students students less than 60% student greater than 60% i split the things into two values we call it as split then we call that option as top down if i am going to get a holistic value total number of students so it is going to be a merge option and then we talked about the binning so it is of three techniques equidep bin means bin boundaries etc so this is all for today in the next class we will extend the same concept towards uh, the transformations etc so we will end up the class now